Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. With you again, Zaid Franco, and this is Arab TV one more time. Our guest today suits the atmosphere of this part of the year, Christmas, and we're going to talk about a topic that interests you all. I have here Fadi Malouf and his daughter Tina, and I'll introduce him by saying that he's a food artisan. We'll not go further because we're not going to spoil the surprise. Welcome, Fadi. Welcome. Hi, Tina. Thank How are you? you? Thank you for having us. So I'll leave you the mission of introducing yourself so you can give us a surprise. Well, actually, uh, I started as a uh, uh, food fermentation scientist uh, and I graduated from Davis, uh, UC Davis in California. And um, really this whole jam thing uh, is, not, uh, is very new. The last two years we've been working on this with Tina. And, uh, uh, I'm a winemaker by trade and um, uh, spent most of my life just doing, uh, uh, working in the wine industry uh, until I got into a, uh, an injury accident at, uh, at work and which prevented me from continuing in that field. And so um, uh, the last five years I was recovering from an injury in 2007 uh, and and then it just got me this new idea of why don't I make jam because I was looking for a job and I couldn't find any at the time it was it was really hard to find a job um, and uh, and I started with jam as a hobby uh, being a, a uh, a farmer's market uh, uh, aficionado, if you want to say, you know. Uh, one time I saw a, a case of figs, just waiting for someone to just like, take me, please. And uh, that's where I started my uh, jam business. I felt nostalgic about the old traditional way of making, of, you know, eating fig jam, like from, from Lebanon and and sure enough, once I got this uh, box of figs at home, uh, I called my mom and and remember how grandma used to make <laughs> the fig jam and and so she gave me some sort of a recipe on uh, over the phone and I called her from uh, you know she lives in Lebanon and that's how it all started. Well, sounds great. Here is my um, surprise then. Yeah, jam. More specifically, fig jam is how it all started. It started and with fig jam. With yes. your story, I can see that there are two sources of this hobby slash business. Yeah. One of them is the science side, your graduation, your industry in, exactly. in, in wine. So you're not so far from the food industry initially. Yeah. And then you're passionate about creating things from simpler items. Yeah. And that's how it evolved into selling your product line of jam at the farmer's market. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. It sounds great. It sounds delicious. Well, <laughs> right now we're like, we have 12 flavors. Okay. So from fig jam to like, you know, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And every time we call mom. <laughs> so you take pri uh, like yeah. orders from people or at least you take requests from people. Yes. Yes. Sounds great. We're, we're in several farmer's markets already. All right. Five, six of them now. I can imagine the, the start of this business in, in a kitchen with simple tools, yeah. with simple uh, utensils. A little pot. A little pot and some sugar and an old recipe from grandma. But this doesn't work forever. It must have evolved into something bigger, more complicated. Oh, I have lots of stories about how it evolved. <laughs> you know, when I first started with, 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 it was a crate of figs. I figured like, oh, it'll be on a small little thing. Mm -hmm. Then I put them in the pot and it overfilled it. Okay. Then I had to go to, uh, uh, to Walgreens to get another, you know, bigger a pot. A bigger pot, okay. Couldn't find anything. <laughs> so, so then I went to this, you know, um, uh, I think I went to Bed Bath and Beyond and they had these big pots. Yeah. So I brought it home and I, you know, put all this fig in, in one pot, goody. Now, I, once I cooked it, I ended up like with 43 jars. All right. Like you never can imagine like, oh, it'll be like five, 10 jars or something. And I had to rush to Safeway. Lucky I live like right next to Safeway. 
to get more cases mm -hmm. of jars to fill them in. And I started giving them left and right to friends and relatives, and I got the greatest feedback from people. Sounds awesome. You should turn it into a business. This is good. Right. We've never had a fake jam like that. And that's, that's how it started. Tina, yes. I can imagine you at home seeing your dad starting this rather big yeah. hobby of his. Uh -huh. and, and what did you think when, he, when you saw him do it for the first time? The first time I saw my dad do it, I was so excited. Um, I, I went into the house and it smelled like just fruits, like hot fruits. And it was just so sugary and sweet. And I was like, Dad, what are you doing? And he said, making fig jam. I was like, since when? Just like that. Confidently. Just like that. I was like, okay. And so then I got to just smell it and taste it, right? Like when it was hot. And then um, it was just delicious. She just fell in love with it. It was really good. Like, Actually, she's the wrong person to ask her, how does it taste? <laughs> because oh. I love it's everything. It's all yummy. <laughs> I don't, no, 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 I don't describe it. I don't want to <laughs> criticize him, but I really can't because it's just so good. There's nothing to criticize. Like just the way he makes it is so good. Yeah. Wow. I like yeah. it already. Yeah. yeah so that's you. how. It, it grew and then the flavors increased and mm. the business expanded well I must admit I owe it to my cousin my cousin oh, uh, his name is Rashid Malouf and he owns a cheese shop and I used to work with him uh, on a time you know part-time basis when he uh, he was he was excited about this jam and and he wanted to uh, he wanted to make me succeed in it, you know. So he encouraged me to make jam and he would sell it for me in his store. So I did that for about a year. I would go to the produce market, get a box of fig, turn it into a jam, and then and sell it at his store. Then I finally realized that you have to be, you can't do it anymore at home. and So you have to make it legal turn yourself into a business. And that's how I started learning, you know, the baby footsteps of how to start a business. Exactly. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. We all go, when we come up with an idea, we all go through the, the fun moments of realizing how great this idea is and it, the, the fact that it can work. Yeah. And then at some point, we're, we're facing reality. That's Obstacles it. start to, to come up. Mm -hmm. um, health inspectors, licenses, things like that. Well, yeah. when, when was that point? Well, uh, some customers at, at, uh, at the cheese boutique, uh, at Rashid's store, uh, they told me, uh, are you licensed? Uh, you need to license this, you need to have a business. Really, how do we do this? Uh, lucky there was a lawyer uh, who's familiar with these things, and he was a friend of ours. And he explained it to me, like you need to go to the tax collector down in, at City Hall in San Francisco, and they will explain everything for you, and then you can go from there. And that's, that's what happened. I went down and I told them I want to start up. I didn't know what the name was going to be either. Uh, so I had to think about it. And then I thought, like, what better than grandma's? Right, it's her recipe after all. Right, it it's her recipe. So... Uh, and I, you know, stood uh, to the side and I kept reading all the information that they had. They give you a little sheet of paper where you, they explain what are the steps you need to do and, and all that, uh, uh, you know, good stuff for, with the city. And so, uh, so that's how it happened. And then after I got into, like, the name, I had to uh, publish it to see if there is any... Uh, if this name was taken or not. Luckily, it wasn't. Odd enough. So, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were like grandmas this, grandmas that, but nothing like grandmas. grandmas. All right. uh, until we got stuck with the online thing, there were lots of grandmas uh, websites. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we had to add the homemade thing, uh, right. add it to grandmas, but we're still... So that's how we started with, with, the, with the city. Uh, we paid our dues. Uh, what else we did? Uh, we published it for, uh, I want to say, 40 days, I think. All right. Uh, I'm not it's like, sure like a name that, change though. process when you yes. publish that in a local newspaper. I didn't even know what DBA means. All right. Uh, it's, 
What is it? Uh, it's like the business name mm -hmm. of your company. Okay. So. Um, and that transferred and you from, or transferred that from a hobby into a legitimate business. Now mm -hmm. you have your own logo, you have your own commitment to your business. Right, but there was another thing that you can't do it at home. See, at the time there wasn't the California Cottage Law. Now you, they, they passed the law where you can do it at home. Okay. Uh, as long as you, you know, uh, uh, qualify and, and you pass all the requirements, then yes, you can do it at home. You have so to have a what kind facility. of requirements are we talking about? Is it about the size of the facility, about a level of cleanliness? Well, most, most importantly, the safety and the level of cleanliness. And, and do you have people coming and inspecting the space? Right, but I never did it at home. All right. I had to go to a commercial kitchen. Initially, I did, but... I never pursued the home cottage thing. Like once it became more official, you, yeah. you pursued that in a bigger place. I had to go to a bigger place. And then I started looking online. I like, you know, there are lots of uh, uh, facilities uh, in the United States where you can do just about anything without even having to invest in lots of money. You can become somebody with very little and hard work. Yes. And, um, you know, a passion uh, to what you're doing. You can get somewhere in this country. Most definitely. That's what I like. Tina, when it. did you get involved in the process? I got involved um, besides trying it and telling him oh, what I Oh, besides think. trying it. <laughs> um, I got involved at the first farmer's market that we had. Mm -hmm. I think that was my first official day. It was in South San Francisco um, at the farmer's market in Orange Park. And uh, I was just there as a salesman, and um, we only had three flavors at the time, uh, fig, apricot, and strawberry. Um, and it was just really good. Like, I was just selling jam, I was giving samples to everybody who walked by. Everybody was loving it, and that was, that was when I started. Yeah, it was a very good, uh, good feedback. Yeah, it good first It encouraged us, like, really, we did good? Yeah, <laughs> we were like, we, we thought we only liked it, but apparently other people do too. <laughs> and it was your first experience in sales and marketing? Um, yeah, at a farmer's market sort of All arena, right. yeah. What do you generally do? Are you studying? Are you uh, yes, I'm a student at San Francisco State. Uh, business management is my major. Perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what the business exactly. needed, a manager. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Great. And with the increase in the volume, with the uh, more specialized form of, of industry that you turn to, you had to um, export, so to speak. You had to expand your, your uh, distribution Absolutely. into more and more places. How did you choose those places? What is the process that you followed? Well, uh, as I started expanding, the pot got bigger and bigger. All the pot, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're still with the pot, huh? We're not doing Well, anything. it doesn't work without the pot, actually. Right. I, I don't think it works without it. It's eventually a pot, even if it's a big factory. It's just a giant <laughs> pot. It's so funny. And, uh, and then there were so many jars you have to fill in. It was really hectic. It's and a lot it, of work. And it's a lot of work. And it was all one-man show. I mean, she would help me whenever she can. She doesn't have school, she would come by and help. Yeah. But most of the time, she would do the labels. She's expert in labor, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, then I thought like, I need to invest in like a filler machine. I didn't even know uh, the name of it. I kept looking forever. And I couldn't find like something that can fill these jars semi-manually or semi-automatic, let's right. put it this way. Until uh, uh, the kitchen owner I asked him one time, and he goes, oh, it's called a depositor, food depositor. So I went back, and I clicked on food depositor, and I found, like, millions of them. Wow. And that's how I started, and I got, uh, you know, a little more to the next level, and I bought a filling machine, which is some sort of a two-way uh, check valve pump piston type. Okay. And, um, and it made life much more easier. Um, then we got a labeler, which didn't work. We thought the manual, the hand, old-fashioned way would, would be better. Right. Um, and as the pot got bigger, 
uh, it was really tiring to just like keep stirring. Mm -hmm. So I invented a mixer on top of it. Invented? Yeah, you have to see it. It's amazing. Did you patent that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's any any mixer. It's just oh, like right. I had he it. He made it himself. Okay. Yeah, I had it made. Um, uh, you know, to be applicable to that pot because mm -hmm. the pot has ears and stuff. Yes. So I had it uh, stationed on some sort of a overhead. And I had a uh, little motor and a shaft with like handmade propeller, some kind of a thing. Beautiful. Welded it and and so now it works by itself. <laughs> Isn't that great? Uh, yes. Right. I just put the, the the whatever fruit I'm cooking uh, and I let it stir and I go do my other stuff, which is popping up the jars. I use those small little. Uh, curd jars. Uh, curd jars. The, ball. the mason jars. Yes. They come vacuumed uh -huh. and sterilized already. So you have to pop open the, the lid and set them on the side and, and get ready for, for filling once the, the cook yeah. off is, is done. Other than that, I'm, I'm in that level. So, how big is the process right now? In, right. in terms of the volume of product, so to speak. Right now, I make like 200 jars a day. Okay, that's quite a yeah. big business. And mm -hmm. if I can cook more, I would do like uh, all five days of the week. But because I am sharing the kitchen with, with, with the owner, I only do three days a week okay. of cooking. So... I, I pretty much, and I don't have any inventory, it all goes. It all goes away. Mm -hmm. It really is difficult to keep an inventory of something like this. Right. And so no, it, no it's still it's kind still. of a one-man show, a man and a woman show, <laughs> to speak. Yeah. Um, you it is don't, mostly him, though. You don't hire people, you don't have assistants. Uh, My brother I do, helps. Yeah, sometimes I do uh, the kitchen owner. Uh, sometimes she does, uh, she helps, um, whenever she's got the time, she helps me with the fruit and stuff, but mostly the main cooking is, is my, my work and, and the main filling is my work. I'm a little bit anal in things, I just don't want to have any problems. So far, zero, zero problems. Good. I would say this is grandma's recipe and it should remain a secret. So you have to be careful about <laughs> yes. that part. About who you tell. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you get someone to help and then, uh, sorry, now you know too much. We have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, any accidents? Anything that you remember that... Um, I ruined a lot of, lot lot of, of pots. Lot of pots. All right. But Big ones, small ones? Small ones. Okay. That's in the... Everything we do is like small scale, so it's not that much of a loss when we, if he messes up. I don't worry about it as long as I'm learning from it. Yeah. And and that's, and I think I'm I'm fortunate to, uh, to learn at a very uh, frivolous cost. Mm -hmm. And you're I, still working on new flavors. Yes. Always. Always. Our newest have been uh, Meyer lemon. We make a spicy cranberry which Ooh. is cranberries and habaneros. Um, we uh, also have a sour cherry that is new okay. and a peach preserve. So, so those are our four newest. Four new, yeah. that uh, raises the yeah. total to? Well, not, well, currently we have 12 flavors, but then there's flavors that come and go with the season. Seasonal, yes. Exactly, uh, yeah. And where can people find these things? A lot of places. We uh, do a bunch of farmer's markets. Um, the closest one to San Jose would probably be Belmont right now. That one is year-round. It's at the Caltrain station. Um, you can also also find us at Lunardi's um, on in San Jose. In San here Jose, there is uh, two Lunardi locations two that Lunardi carry our jam. locations. Meridian, I think one of them would be mm -hmm. on the Meridian Avenue. Avenue. Uh, there is in Santa Cruz. In Los Gatos, the Lunardi's there. Uh, we also do uh, William Sonoma's artisan. Uh, uh, artisan events. Okay. William Sonoma, uh, they have every Saturday in a specific location, they do an artisan day. Like a little market for artisans. Uh -huh. And it promotes people to come in, maybe they have some sales and stuff, and they get to have some tastings. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much in most of them. 
the one in Valley Fair, Valley, uh, Santa Clara. Yeah, in the mall. Uh, one in Los Caros, uh, Union, Union Square, Square in San Francisco. There was another one, Pleasanton. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. That's quite a good selection. Also, just recently, I partnered with a uh, distributor. So he got me legs all over the place almost. East Bay, too, in Berkeley. Yeah. Um, so we're like in 25, 26 stores, mm -hmm. other than the eight stores of Lunardi. Okay, that, that's small local quite shops. Ambitious. Yeah. And the feedback very, so far, I would say? Very, very well. well. Very good. Very good. Uh, the, the stuff that you hear, this is the freshest jam I've ever had in my life. It, they, they always compare it to the actual fruit itself, and it's because we don't add too much sugar to it. Minimal sugar. We keep the, we keep the flavor of, of the, the fruit, fruit. Uh, present in yeah, the jam. Rather than sweetening it. True. Yeah. And yeah. I would think, since you just mentioned the whole process, the whole period between fruit and sold at the market is like how long? A few days, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there is no uh, shelf well. No preservation, there's nothing. no stock, as you mentioned, and the it whole process goes. takes a day, yeah. and then it's distributed right after, and that adds but some pressure. Some people ask us, like, how long does it keep in the refrigerator? And I go, well, between four to six weeks, and I hope it doesn't last that long with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it doesn't, it, it cannot last too long. And once you open it, that's it. You have to consume it. Some people... Just eat it off of the jar, straight. With a spoon. It gets so addictive for them. I bet. Yeah. Any preservatives you add for Nothing. prolonging shelf life? Nothing. Just Nothing sugar. At all. Nothing. Sugar and sugar is a preservative True. itself. Yes. Uh, and uh, lemon juice. That too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, and the sugar content at the most is twenty, f not even twenty-five, twenty-four percent. Twenty-four. Okay. So it is mostly fruit. It is. Definitely. It's in fact less than what I used to yeah. remember. Yeah, the ones at the store you buy, they're 65% yes. sugar. It's not even real sugar, it's corn syrup. It is corn syrup. Yeah. Now, it, it, it's yeah. even less than what I remember of, of like People. homemade mm -hmm. jam mm -hmm. that we used to make at home. It used to contain a, like 50% yeah. um, something like yeah. that. We yeah. even have uh, two flavors that are no added sugar at all. Oh, Fig wow. and apricot. That's right. And we We're, add chia seeds to them. We've been experimenting with the uh, figs and apricot mm -hmm. uh, with no added sugar and no artificial sweetener. So it's just a sweetness. So we add fruit. chia seed to it. And chia seed is supposed to? Uh, to give it, uh, it gelatinized when it's hydrated. Yes. So it gives it spreadability. But it's also rich in omega-3 fiber, protein, and antioxidants. True, it, it, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really a, good for you. It's a jam you eat, you don't feel guilty about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea <laughs> for right. people who are so um, obsessed about their health or mm -hmm. conscious about their health. This yeah. is really a good idea. Yeah. Um, you, you said a little bit about this, but the kind of response you get from people around you. Some people say, oh, we're so lucky to have you. We haven't tasted a good jam, like forever. No, I was I was and more into. Uh, um, I was asking about like family members, relatives, people who saw you transit that from a home. Oh, they're so into proud, business. and they 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 encourage <coughs> me uh, tremendously. Actually, they're very supportive. Yeah, I have my uncle. He calls me every day, like, "What are you doing today? Which flavor you're doing?" And, and he's very proud of me, and so is everybody in the, around me in the family. And uh, they just uh, don't want to see me, you know, uh, stop doing it. Because it's hard work. Like, I, I get up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I never sit, sit still until like 10, 11 at night. Every day, every Sunday, every Saturday. Sunday... My day finishes at three, and I just go and crash, literally. Of course, it being a one-man show, as you mentioned, or yes. mm -hmm. a small business, you, you end up following on marketing and transportation yes. and, and our uh, You have to sales. do everything. The account, you have to know what you're doing, right? So sure. all the numbers, I have to enter it in its specific you know, uh, accounting books. And uh, the marketing has also uh, got to answer emails to... 
all kinds of you know uh, clients or customers uh, and you have to you know keep up with what's new all right so you have a Science customer service wise, line yeah. as well yeah that's great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where is the future going what's the plan i have an idea i wonder if i can uh, if i can make it happen or not it's a long shot, but it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea, is why, why just jam? Why don't we make everything homemade? Anything edible that can be made homemade and just step away from all the corporate canned, pasteurized, whatever uh, foods that are canned or put in a jar or why don't we have a store that has everything homemade in there, from pasta, from sauces, from pickles. With its own kitchen. So what I was thinking is have, a, have my own kitchen, big enough to sustain me, and maybe have other artisans to come and join, either by renting or being shareholders in the thing, with a storefront. And it would be, um, you know, a, an idea where you come in and you purchase your cheese, your bread, your pastas, your pickles, everything you need, it's made in the back. Right at the same facility. That at the great. same facility. It'll be all homemade. It'll right. be grandma's homemade. It will be grandma's homemade. And I think, apart from the yeah. major corporates that make the canned preserved food, um, there is no one who would object on an idea like this. Everybody prefers their food to be homemade, yeah. fresh, natural, and natural. Natural, local, sustained, lo you know, we, we need to go back to basics. Most definitely. And uh, keep it small. It was really a great conversation. The 30 yeah. minutes have gone by so fast. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, <laughs> well, thank you it for was having a delightful us. conversation. It was a delicious conversation. <laughs> thank you thank so you much. Thank for you, Thank you, Fadi, for being here. Thank you, Tina, for Thank the valuable you, Keep opinion. up the good work. I love your program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And we'll wait for the opportunity to try your products. Of course. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arab TV.